Hello, hello, good evening, good evening, and welcome. So, um, here we are. It's a Thursday once again. So it basically means that we are at the last class for uh, for this week. Now, for tonight, uh, we are going to continue talking about modifiers. I hope that you know you had some time to review the chart that I sent you last night because that chart is going to play an important role this evening as we are going to continue creating some examples and well of course practicing more on how to use uh, modifiers now i also saw that some of you guys had um, some questions regarding specific sections of the platform so i feel like i am going to be also trying to clarify those doubts that you may have um because Sorry, because of course it's important. It's a, it's a Friday. I mean, it's a it's a Thursday, basically the last day of the of the week. And uh, if there are you know any questions, any doubts are still still to be solved about section three, um, we can go ahead and work on that as well, so that you have it all ready to go before the weekend. Um, in regards of the question for the night, well, it is basically a given. I hope you guys already know what it's going to be about because it's basically always um, the same when it comes to the last day of the week. So, you know, it's um, basically expected of what we're going to be discussing this evening. Um, now, in terms of modifiers, uh, which is a topic that we were covering yesterday, tonight I also want, um, you know, to get to see how a sentence can sound if we try to include one of each modifier for um, a full sentence. I have here a few examples that we can use, but yeah, it's it's a tricky situation. I mean, when we use modifiers, of course, we're going to be um, having to be careful when it comes to um, the order, which is the main thing, you know, memorizing the order when you're going to mention each category of modifier and applying them in the proper way. That is the main thing that we have to memorize, the main thing that we have to learn. Uh, then afterwards, of course, it's all going to be simple. Now, um, I went ahead and tried to find out uh, about the thing that I was mentioning, if it's you know something common in, in Spanish as well, to have an order for the modifiers or for um, the adjectives. And it turns out that um, the order happens to be very similar to the one we have in English. However, it's not necessarily recognized or established by the academy. So it's not like, um, you know, like a, like a force given. It's not like a, like a rule. Um, it's more of a certain idea that we have, but it's not necessarily the rule that we have to follow when it comes to um, adjectives in Spanish. So let's get started. Let's get to hear from you guys. And as I said, for tonight, it's a given. We already know what the question is about. So we're going to talk about the weekend. What are the possible plans that you have? And what are, some, what are some of the activities that you are, you know, looking forward to? So let's get started and let's hear from Luis. Uh, we're going to start with you tonight, Luis. So tell us, what are your plans or expectations for this coming weekend? Uh, good evening, sir. Evening. Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah. Um, what are your plans or expectations for this coming weekend? Uh, <clears throat> I think the same routine. I have no plans. Yeah, maybe for uh, the first uh, week of August month, mm -hmm. maybe for the vacation of August, maybe we are going to to travel to it's uh, here's saying in El Salvador, maybe to the beach, maybe to the mountain, uh, but not an special uh, plans for next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that happens. You know, regular weekends are simply regular weekends, so it's normal that we don't have special plans for um for these weekends. But yeah, yes. uh, and mostly when the vacation is coming up, so it's like we are trying to save energy and time and money for that, you know, for the vacation. So yeah, hopefully 
it's uh, a lot more fun when the vacation is closer. That is something nice about this course or this module at least because we're going to wrap it up basically before starting the vacation. So we're finishing the classes and then in a few days we're going to be on, uh, on vacation. So that will be great. That will be a, a great thing happening here. So, well, yeah, thank hopefully, you. Yeah, hopefully, you know, your, your weekend goes as, um, as regular as planned and uh, you don't have uh, any negative highlights. Hopefully there are some positive highlights to share, but yeah, great. Thank you very much for sharing. How about in the case of Avi? What are your plans for this coming weekend, Avi? Um, I don't have any plans yet, but I think I will come out with my family. Maybe, uh, maybe go sizing. I think this tourism. Sizing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sizing or just. Uh, see some stores and looking for a dress. Hmm. All right. So there might be some shopping included in this weekend. That sounds great. Nice. Very nice. Uh, and yeah, sightseeing is what we do when we go to places like La Ruta Panoramica because there is no like a special activity. It's simply just driving to places and looking at the panorama or as other people call it, the landscape. So, yeah, it's basically that, you know, sightseeing is only when you travel to places just to take a look at them. Um, Can so you ride it? Sorry? Can you ride the war? Oh, yeah, sure. Sightseeing. Um, here we go. Sightseeing. Okay. It's a uh, okay. compound word. So, yeah, sightseeing. Um, all right, great. So, hopefully, as I said, yeah, you get a chance, you know, to enjoy your weekend with your family. You get a chance to go um, to to a beautiful place. If it doesn't happen, well, at least you're going to have also a chance to go shopping. So either story or either option sounds nice. Uh, moving on. How about we hear from Jenny? In your case, Jenny, where or I'm sorry, what are your plans for this coming week? By the moment, I don't have any plan, any plan for this weekend. Okay. Only only clean the house, clean the house <laughs> and iron my clothes. The most common plan that we all have for weekends. <laughs> and the funniest yeah. one, of course, is the the greatest time that we can have, you know, going to um to the kitchen and do some cleaning, then going to the living room and do some cleaning, then going into the rooms and do some cleaning. It's it's traveling all over the place. It's like, you know, you, you move from here to there, it's like like crazy. So yeah, it's it's an, a very interesting plan for every weekend. Well, <laughs> hopefully, you know, you have fun. It's it's uh, it's nice. I think that, yeah, it was with you guys that I uh, had to discuss or got to discuss about listening to music while you do cleaning. It's it's fun. It's interesting. It's nice. Uh, and you get out of the routine instead of just, um, you know, doing regular cleaning with like a uh, boring environment. You do cleaning with music and that makes it a little bit better. So nice. Very nice. Good luck with, uh, bueno, igual pueda que tenga chance de ir al volcán también si hace, si hace el, el cleaning. Pero al volcán de ropa sucia. Okay, moving on. How about we hear, <laughs> we hear from Melanie? In your case, Melanie, what are your plans for this coming weekend? My plans are visiting my great grandparents. Mm -hmm. All right. Where do they live? They live in Weha. Oh, Weha. At, by the lake? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's going to be interesting. Nice. So um, hopefully, you know, the trip is nice to there and uh, if you're going to Weha, I don't know I don't remember where you live but if you have a chance you know you might also go through Santa Ana and uh, make a stop there because yeah they're going to be um, having their festivities uh, around these days so great very nice sounds like a nice plan going visiting some family it's another of the regulars for weekend activities so hopefully everything works properly with your plan um, in the case of uh, Lorena, how about you? What are your plans for this coming weekend? Well, on Saturday, 
I wanted to go to Ilovasco, but maybe no, because today uh, my cat had a, a surgery and mm -hmm. I had to take care of him. But on Sunday, I will, I will have a plan with my husband to go to the beach. Mm, that's great. What is your close? What is, oh, San Blas. I was about to ask you that. Yeah, we can go to the, that club. It's nice. All right. Great. Very nice. So hopefully you have an amazing time there. And uh, well, and all, I also hope that your cat recovers um, pretty soon. Yeah. And, you know, he's back in action again. So great. Very nice. Now, um, me sorprende que nadie... Bueno, no, espérense, voy a esperar un ratito. Vamos a ver, ahorita voy a tirar mis dos apuestas más grandes. Um, Gabriela, in your case, Gabriela García, what are your plans for this weekend? Hi. Hey um, I don't have any plans, but maybe I will go and see Barbie. Sabía, lo sabía, <risa> les, les juro. Ven, sí. si yo, si, que si yo si iba a apostar a verdad, yo, es que mi, mis apuestas seguras eran con usted o con Leslie, pero no sé por qué. Pero bueno, ok, Gabriela, um, what else are you going to do? <risa> um, I don't know, I, I'm feeling ashamed right now. <risa> I, I want to go to see more videos. <risa> It's okay. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to hear that. I wanted to hear that, you know, people had plans to go Barbie. It's not like I'm judging you. It's, you know, it's like a plan that we, I think it's like the most common plan for this weekend. Like <laughs> yeah. if I wasn't teaching here, maybe right now I will be in line to get into the movies because yeah, it's the <laughs> premiere tonight. So I like to go to premieres. This uh, weird thing that I have is that um, when there is a movie coming out, I prefer to go on the first day because that way I don't have to get any kind of spoilers. Like I can watch the movie as it is. Uh, yeah. But right after tomorrow, I know that there are going to be tons of spoilers on the news or on um, on the internet. So it's like, it's different, but yeah. So, um, please. so we're not going to see them. Yeah, don't get into TikTok or Twitter or anything like that. And uh, don't do Facebook. Don't do nothing. Just maybe do WhatsApp. However, be careful because if I ha if I find any spoilers, I'll send them. All right. No, oh, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that kind of person. I hate it when people share spoilers. I mean, it's weird because I look for them sometimes. Mostly when it's like Marvel movies, I go ahead and look for spoilers. But um that's also the reason why i have now turned into going to premieres instead of going on a different day because that way i do not get more spoilers than they're required now ab talking about that that is also one thing that i love about here like about el salvador and it's the fact that we normally have our premieres or like the first showing of the movies one day before they do in the U.S. And, you know, the ones that share more spoilers than anyone is people from the U.S. Uh, but yeah, that is a great thing because we have one day in advance and uh, that gives us, you know, an advantage when it comes to watching movies and not getting any spoilers. So nice. I hope, uh, sorry, did you get the tickets already, Gabriela? No, no yet, but I will tomorrow maybe. Yeah, we yeah, try to get try to get them as soon as possible because my sister she is going with some of her friends and they said that um most of the showings were already sold out when they tried to get them and they were lucky enough that um they made available another showing at a similar hour like around 1:30 I think it is. Um and yeah, they were able to get the tickets for that showing cuz it is selling like um like hot bread. Como pan caliente. Okay, I will try to write today. So yeah, you should. You should. If you really want to see it and you know this weekend, you should try to get him um as soon as possible. All right. Um, how about Leslie? What are your plans for this weekend? Okay, my plan for this weekend maybe are going to out with my boyfriend on Saturday mm -hmm. and buy tickets. Uh, to go a concert the following next week oh. and rest on sunday <laughs> all right nice what is the concert or like who, who's the artist uh it's an special of selena quintanilla in republic ah it's a right. book club and so cool all right yeah that sounds great 
you know, I will go. Selena Quintanilla, one of the biggest and greatest Latin artists of all time. And um, yeah, that, that will be an amazing experience, I feel. So nice, very yeah. nice. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are able to get the tickets and, you know, you get to enjoy um, the, the concert, of course, when the concert happens. So great. Very, very good. Um, now, let's hear maybe from Walter. In your case, Walter, what are your plans for this coming weekend? Uh, good evening. Evening. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we have a, uh, we we are going to uh, visit the doctor with my daughter. And on Monday, uh, probably we are going to uh, to the the birthday party with my son. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. All right, very nice. Um, so is it like a routine visit with your daughter or is she is she um, sick in any way? For the moment, it's a routine. Oh, okay, great, great, nice, yes. nice to know. Hopefully everything goes as um, perfect as possible, so nice. And um, yeah, talking about birthdays, well, today... Oh, no sé si ustedes conocen la frase jinxed. Cuando, um, cuando estamos hablando a veces de, de cosas como si no lo queremos, como muy salvadoreño, ¿verdad? Que no lo queremos salar. Jinxed. ¿Alguna vez alguien lo, lo ha escuchado? Bueno, a ver. Uh, here we have it, jinxed. So, uh, when we say jinxed it, sí, es que lo iba a decir hace un momento cuando dije, ¿verdad? Que todavía no, mejor no decía nada acerca de lo, de lo del plan, o sea, lo que yo esperaba que mencionaran. Decimos jinxed it cuando eh, estamos queriendo explicar que no queremos que eso no pase, o sea, como no queremos salar eso, ¿sí? Entonces, si yo decía antes... Eh, por ejemplo, que Gabriela lo compartiera el decir, ah, que nadie ha dicho que va a ir a ver Barbie, that is basically jinxing it, sí, es casi como salarlo porque de ahora ya nadie lo va a querer decir o si no, también lo mismo, ¿verdad? Cuando alguien ustedes van a tener, qué sé yo, una salida y alguien les dice, y está seguro que no va a llover entonces, y es como que you're jinxing in it, sí, o sea, lo estás salando, por decir así, o sea, estás trayendo mala suerte, digamos o estás mencionando cosas de, de mala fortuna a lo que te estoy compartiendo Ahora, también se utiliza el jinxed en el sentido de eh, adivinar algo, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, ahorita, eh, en eso, ¿verdad? Que yo eh, estaba expectante a que alguien dijese que iba a, ver, a, iba, iba a ir a ver la película, eh, bien hubiese podido decir, ah, jinxed, ¿sí? ¿Qué significa? Que, pues, lo predije, en cierto modo. Entonces, esa frase um, se usa mucho cuando hablamos acerca de... ¿Cómo decirlo? De, de, de situaciones en donde cuando no queremos que se sepa, no queremos que, que nos eh, den mala fortuna y cuando lo adivinamos, pues eso, ¿verdad? Básicamente que lo logramos adivinar. Now, when it comes to jinxing it now, or the, the reason why I'm, I'm sharing this is because I also jinx the fact that um, there is going to be a... Oh, sorry, so the whole day today, the whole day, I was trying not to jinx, ¿sí? Estaba tratando no de traer mala fortuna to this class because um, tomorrow is my birthday and I didn't want to be, you know, like in a class um, because normally what we do with my family is that we have dinner. So it will be very inconvenient if I had to be um, teaching. Last year, I, I actually wasn't, um, yeah, I didn't have a curse last year. Oh yeah, I remember why. The, the reason why was because I had COVID. So yeah, last year I was with COVID and I wasn't uh, working at that time. So um, I didn't have a class on the day of my birthday, but uh, this time, well, I wanted to enjoy it. And that's what I plan to do. I plan to um, be home as much as possible tomorrow. On Saturday, I think I, one of the things I want to do is that I want to go get sushi with one of my sisters. Because the other one is going to Barbie. So, yeah, she's not going to be available. And uh, I would like to go for dinner as well. And on Sunday, well, I think I told you before that on Sunday, I wanted to go to Santa Ana, but I cannot because I have to be the whole day 
in class. So, you know, it's bad luck for me, but still, uh, hope the whole weekend goes uh, in, a, in a proper way. Now, one more person. Let's hear from, let's see, Elizabeth, in your case, what are your plans for this coming weekend? Hi. <laughs> hey there. Uh, and I live next to uh, Feria Ganadera. So <laughs> I'm going to go to the dance and, and the festival and mm, drink more beer. <laughs> Gotta enjoy it. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, una, una forma en la que podemos decir eso podría ser bien get, uh, get busted. Get busted. You want to get busted? All right. Um, so, nice. Yeah, that sounds, you know, sounds entertaining. Um, do you like, like, cattle and things like that? Like those? Elizabeth? I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I was saying, um, do you like um, cattle and stuff like that? Um, I can't understand. What's the meaning in? Cattle, el ganado. Ah. Mm -hmm. I don't like. But the carnival is very, very fun. <laughs> okay, nice. I mean, <laughs> as far as there is alcohol included, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Just kidding. So yeah, uh, get wasted. Eso era lo que, lo que quería decir. You want to get wasted. When you, get, when you get wasted is when you drink too much or when you have too much of something. Because even from food, you can get wasted. So yeah. Getting wasted, basically, you know, ruining yourself. Uh, well, hopefully that plan also becomes a reality because, yeah, sounds entertaining. Why not? So, uh, right now we are going to... Oh, les decía antes. Algunos de... dijeron que tenían dudas, creo. Algunas cosas de la plataforma. Ya tengo acá lista la, um, la, la, la plataforma. Entonces... No sé cuáles son las dudas que aún teníamos y eso, como les digo, prefiero decirles o aclarárselos en el chat y no necesariamente mostrarles eh, las respuestas. Así que no sé en cuáles serían las secciones que podemos tener dudas en este momento y pues aclarar eso de una vez, ¿verdad? Ya que pues este fin de semana hay también chequeo. Entonces, y si alguna pregunta o algo todavía no nos ha quedado del todo claro, lo podemos eh, Pues aclarar en este momento. So, do you guys have any questions or any um, anything you would like to get to hear from the platform or from from the exercises? I have I have a doubt in. Let me see. It was in I maybe final exam and combined sentences. Final exam and combined sentences. I think we're Part talking one. About, I think we're talking about uh, B. Okay. All right. Part, yeah. Where or what is the the one that you need or all of them? It, it is something that maybe I'm not sure because I, I couldn't do it. I, I tried too many things, too many times. But but it's like a. a it's the question is Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is a cheap is is a cheap to travel. It's cheap to travel in by in by bus. In bus. Mm -hmm. And then and I had to say like Bulgaria is a small country where you can travel in in by bus. Or I don't um, know. Maybe I haven't understand that. Yeah. Here the thing is that the way in which we're going to combine these two sentences is by using that is. So we're going to say that is. So Bulgaria, Bulgaria is a small country. Bulgaria is a small country. That, that is cheap, cheap to, travel to travel in, by, in bus. by bus. Yes. Bulgaria is a small country that is cheap to travel in by bus. And of course, please don't forget to add um, the period at the end and the capital letter on Bulgaria. Because if you don't add the capital letter on Bulgaria and if you don't add the, um, the period at the end, then it's going to be um, wrong. So, yeah. We have to be careful with that. Now, how about the second one? How would you say the second one is, Lorena? Or how do you think the second one is now that you know that it's um, Florence, that is? Mm -hmm. Florence is easy to navigate on foot. Okay, so here we're going to make a small change. 
um, because here what is probably more important about Florence will be that it's a small city. So we mentioned that first. So first, Florence, uh, uh -huh. it's Florence, a small city. It's a small city that, that is easy to navigate. navigate on foot. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. So Florence, Florence is a small city that is easy to navigate on foot. Uh, how about number three? This one is a little bit harder. So here we're going to use commons and which. So that means that we're going to have um, plus in the middle. When we have clauses, it means that we have like a comment, like an aggregation in the middle. Um, so yeah, how do you think um, number three will be built up? My hometown is a popular tourist destination. My hometown gets crowded. Mm -hmm. My home, my hometown is a popular tourist destination that gets crowded in summer. Very close. Muy buena idea, pero como le digo en este that caso. Is getting, a... That is getting crowded, in crowded. No, de hecho lo del gets crowded está bien, pero eh, aquí vamos a utilizar una estructura diferente y creo que esta mejor se las voy a mandar porque es un tanto más compleja. Sería my hometown is um, Sorry, my hometown, which is, oh, sorry, my, my hometown, comma, which is a popular um, tourist destination, comma, gets crowded in summer. Entonces, en este caso, como les digo, tenemos una clause en medio. Las clauses son como oraciones, pero que no poseen un nombre. La mayoría de clauses son así, las definite clauses, más que todo, las que son como para prever, pre, no, proveer una definición acerca del nombre que ya se mencionó. En este caso sería my hometown, which is a popular tourist destination, gets crowded in summer. Entonces, si quitásemos esa clause, simplemente nos quedaríamos, ¿verdad?, con esta oración de acá. My hometown gets crowded in summer. Pero colocando esa información extra en medio, que lo hacemos con comas en lugar de utilizar paréntesis, decimos my hometown, which is which is a popular tourist destination, gets crowded in summer, ¿sí? Entonces, esa sería, ¿verdad?, la forma de, um, de poder eh, escribir esta. Ahorita les voy a mandar esto eh, a través del chat. Let's see. So, um, great. Very good job, um, Elizabeth. Nice. Way to go. All right. Uh, so, number four. How do you think number four will be? Um, ahora quisiera escuchar a alguien más. Vamos a ver. En el caso de, uh, um, let's see, Se me fue, aquí está, Gabriela Cortés, ¿cómo cree usted que sea la número cuatro de esa sección? Bueno, no, puede que no esté ahí ahorita, ¿verdad? Así que no. ¿Quiénes están en la plataforma? ¿Quiénes están, eh, tienen abierta la plataforma en este momento? Ahí no sale nadie, va. Ok, Lorena, so number four, <laughs> how do you think number four will be? Istanbul has great shopping. That is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Once again, we use the same structure as before with the commas and which. I and which mm -hmm. Istanbul, which is, which is not with Istanbul, which is, which has great shopping. Mm -hmm. Comma is the comma is the home of the Grand Bazaar. Yes, there you go. So Istanbul and... comma which has great shopping, comma, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. So yeah, okay. that's the way. So Istanbul, comma, which has um, great shopping, comma, is the home of the Grand Bazaar. So yeah, that's the way to do it. Nice. That, really the, the, all, the all of them I have completed. Okay. Any other yes. questions with any other sections yeah. or we are all clear thus far? All right, then it seems like we are. Therefore, we're going to move on. No more questions about the platform. I have already closed it. And when I close it, it basically means that we have to wait another 10 minutes in order to get there again. So um, how do you guys feel with this? Do you guys feel like you have already learned how to use modifiers? ¿Cómo estamos con esto? ¿Cómo se sienten ustedes cuando um, hablando acerca de esto de los modifiers o adjetivos? Um, en el sentido de conocer en qué momento voy a utilizar cada uno de ellos. ¿Creen ustedes que ya eh, podrían en una oración así, o sin necesariamente verdad pausarnos a pensar en qué orden iba, eh, decir una oración con dos o tres um, adjetivos diferentes 
y los podemos colocar de forma correcta. ¿Creen ustedes que ya estamos listos o les gustaría practicar un poco más acerca de esto? Oye, andan bien callados todos, ¿verdad? Bueno, igual. ¿You should have a test? ¿Ah? Or or ¿You should have a test or something like that that we should try if we really understand? Hmm, that is interesting. There is one that I know about. However, of course, that will be like a, like an, a different source. Entonces, tampoco se las puedo mostrar porque recuerden que el problema principal que tenemos a veces con esto eh, es por cuestiones de copyright. Que si yo les mostrase el, mm -hmm. alguna cosa que venga ¿verdad? de otro sitio, eh, yeah. si hay imágenes o cualquier cosa que pueda ser Um, afectada por ello, pues ahí entramos en infracciones y eso puede generar problemas en el canal. Así que por okay. eso no podría mostrarles. Lo que podría hacer sí es compartirles el enlace eh, y que cada quien, ¿verdad? Ya en su tiempo, a su gusto, lo pueda intentar. Eh, y eso sí, eso sí podría hacerse. Porque sí, hay muchas ocasiones en las que me quedo con ganas de utilizar eh, situaciones o cosas externas, pero ese es el detalle, que no quiero ser yo el causante de más problemas, ¿verdad? En, en el, en el canal. Así que, bueno, sorry. But yeah, um, just as I said yesterday, what you have to remember is that determiners and nouns are not important when it comes to the order of the modifiers. What is important is the rest of them. How about if we include an opinion in it, if we include a size in it, if we include an age or, you know, a time period, If we include a shape, if we include a color, an origin, a material, and a purpose. So all of them have to go in that order. And here I have um, one that can, we may turn into a sentence. However, as I said yesterday, it's not like the best idea. Now, what I want us to do is basically fill up this whole chart. See, ¿Sí? quisiera que pudiésemos... Eh, completar el chart y tener, ¿verdad?, opiniones, pues, de partes suyas, en el cual tengamos eh, más, digamos, más adjetivos que son acerca de la opinión, más adjetivos que sean acerca del tamaño, más adjetivos acerca de la edad, más adjetivos acerca de la forma, el color, el origen, el material y el propósito. So, that is the idea right now. Uh, and what I think we're going to do is... Quisiera que tomen una captura porque lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a estarnos dividiendo porque mientras más tengamos, es mejor. Así que vamos a trabajar en grupos y vamos a tratar de completar este cuadro. ¿sí? A tratar de eh, colocar aquí los que hagan falta. Aquí hacen falta tres, en este caso hacen falta dos. La mayoría serán dos nada más o tres los que vamos a tener que buscar. Pero que vayamos a los grupos y junto con los compañeros tratar de completar, ¿verdad?, con eh, diferentes adjetivos, lo que vamos a hacer es eso, buscar adjetivos diferentes para eh, saber cuáles podrían ser otras opciones a utilizar en el caso de cada una de estas um, categorías de adjetivos. So, for size, for, sorry, for opinion, for size, for age, for shape, for color, for origin, for material, and for purpose. So, right now we're going to have around seven minutes. Creo que es suficiente, unos siete, ocho minutos. So we're going to go divided into two groups once again and get to work on this chart. So please, 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 I beg you, please be participant, be active when we are in the groups because I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear that you are, you know, discussing and sharing. And the idea, once again, is not for you to simply type it and send it in the chat. If you cannot speak right now because you are in a, in a crowded or busy place, that's all right. But uh, as much as possible, if you can practice, please go ahead and do it. So I will be opening the rooms and I will give you guys a chance to complete the chart. Así que básicamente lo que vamos a hacer es eso, ¿verdad? Atraer la cantidad que haga falta de cada uno de ellos. Tres de opinión, eh, dos en el caso del de size, sorry, um, dos en el caso del age, tres en el caso del shape, um, dos en el caso del color, tres en el caso del origen, and, and tres en el caso del material, and two in the case of purpose. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So uh, let's get ready, and you guys may start joining the rooms now.
Hi. Hola. Hi. Uh, son oraciones o son ejemplos lo que tenemos que hacer de, de, de lo que dejó usted. Solamente son ejemplos, solamente tenemos que buscar eh, más adjetivos. O sea, no, son palabritas nada más, no necesariamente oraciones. Ay, no, no, no había entendido es que... esa uh -huh. parte. Sí, la idea solo es como completar el cuadro con eh, las que hagan falta. En este caso, en algunos faltan tres, en algunos otros faltan dos. Así que la idea es esa, completarla con la cantidad de adjetivos que haga falta. Y la idea de dividirnos es porque así tenemos pues diferentes opciones, ¿verdad? Unas, eh, unos que elijan ustedes y otros que puedan elegir los del otro grupo. Ok. Uh -huh. Intelligent and in age, middle age could be. Yeah, it's true. Or oh, uh, ancient. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, ancient. Uh, baby could be a baby. <laughs> age. No, we don't yes. say baby. Yeah, yeah. We can say, we can say. Um, eh, Asian, como dijeron, creo que es mejor. Um, um, uh, elderly, que es como. Elderly, ya. Yeah. Uh, anciano mayor, porque creo que el que me han dicho estaba muy literal. <laughs> yeah, that's because it was in, in the list that he gave us before. Uh, in the shape, shape rectangular. Um, circular. Yeah, yeah circular. Square. Che, eh, eh, cuadrado, ¿cuál es el nombre de cuadrado? Eh, square. Square, ya. Yeah. Square. square. Triangle. Eh, and color would be gold, no the colors, ¿no? Uh-huh, all the colors, blue. Yeah, yeah, white, yeah. Pink, white. Uh, silver, and that's as well. In origin, it's a country, no? China. Italian. Italian, yeah. French. Uh, material. Uh, was uh, wooden. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, when it's close, it was uh, cotton, no? Plastic. Ah, yeah, plastic could be. Plastic. Um, another one could be metallic. In material. Yeah. Yeah, because we the ones that he gave us was wooden, cotton, iron. Iron, yeah, what is or oh, steel. Okay. Gold. Gold. Yeah. Silver. All, all of them. <laughs> all of them. And purpose. Stand up, wake up. No, but it's that's not no purpose, no? Or yes, purpose was like, uh, why we do something, you know? In that one, we, we just have a sleeping bag and roasting, but I don't know which, which ones else. Purpose. Because for me, purpose is like, what, what are we going to use that, no? If but, we can see, if we can see the, the examples in the chart. Yeah, we it can, was we sleeping. Can see sleeping uh, wicked. Uh, for that reason, I, I mentioned the stand up or wake up. No, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. What do the, the rest? 
We should be repeating on the rest. The rest of what? Maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Leslie, Sandra. <laughs> um, uh, I agree. We need to put up a, a stand up and then wake up. Okay. But I didn't understand wicked because it's wicked, it's me, malpada. <laughs> so, no entiendo por qué está ahí, eso sí es purpose. Mm. Yeah, it, that, that purpose is, is a little bit different, no? On the rest. We finish, I think, because now it's complete. Okay. Bye. Already then. So it seems like um, the adjectives of purpose are a little bit tricky for some of you guys. And yeah, they are. Sometimes they are. But when we're talking about adjectives of purpose, what we do is, as I said last night, basically we just use a verb in ing form and uh, because we're describing something that we use to do something else. Um, so that is what happens. Like, for example, if you say hiking boots, so hiking is going to work as a modifier or as an adjective because you're describing that the boots, you use them for hiking. So that is why we refer to it as the purpose. Or if you say, for example, um, what? Um, swimming, swimming pool, no, swimming yeah. dress. Yeah, swimming pool or, uh, yeah, the swimming, it's, it's, it's a different name. It has a different swimming name. Swimming suit. Uh, yeah, the swimming suit, uh-huh. So, but the swimming pool, yeah, swimming pool, we are talking about a pool that we use to swim because there may be pools for other purposes. But in this case, we're talking about a swimming, I mean, a pool that has the purpose um, or is supposed to be used to swim in it. So purpose basically is going to mean that, okay? Um, a verb in its ing form that we use to refer to things that have a specific purpose, like running shoes, let's say. Cycling shoes, both are different. Racing shoes, they are all different because running shoes have a form, have a form factor, like, you know, they're specific in the shape and in the components that they have. Cycling shoes have different categories or maybe, sorry, not categories, different um, characteristics, and uh, they are built in a different way. And when we talk about... Um, racing i'm talking more into like car racing so racing shoes are different once again in the way in which they are built with maybe the materials they are built out of now another thing eh, excelente caso de decir por ejemplo iron si se puede decir iron uh, por ejemplo si yo digo that's an iron kettle I, uh, yes you can use that um, you can also say it's a silver something, silver chain. You can you can say that. The one that has a difference there, the same as wood, is gold. See, ¿Sí? wood y gold son bien similares en ese sentido. Estoy hablando ahorita acerca de los eh, adjetivos de material. Cuando utilizamos wood, decimos wooden, ¿verdad? Wooden chair, wooden, wooden table, wooden boat, wooden, I don't know, knife, wooden anything, wooden house. Now, when we talk about gold, we say golden. See, golden, mm. golden chain, golden glass, golden plate. Golden beer. Uh-huh. So, yes, golden. <laughs> um, lo único que no es bueno golden son las beers. No, I'm just kidding. So... <laughs> it's true. I completely agree with that. <laughs> okay. Sorry por aquellos que digan, son ricas. Pero no. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Hablamos de regia. <laughs> Sí, sí, thank you. Sí, bueno, perdón, pero sí, o suprema. Todos somos adultos. Sí, pero bueno, uh, so, golden. Bueno, cuando hablamos de cosas que estén hechas de oro, será golden. Entonces, esos dos son diferentes. El resto, la mayoría, se pueden utilizar los materiales tal y como vienen. Hay, eh, escuché, por, por ejemplo, que creo que Luis dijo um, que steel, sí, igual. O sea, podemos decir steel this, eh, o sea, let's say it's a steel pan. Ahora, con el steel, 
cuando hablamos de uh, en materiales eh, regularmente estilo así como tal se utiliza más en cuestiones de construcción pero para la vida cotidiana es mucho más común que escuchemos hablar acerca del stainless steel sí que es el acero inoxidable el stainless steel les voy a enviar también eso es muy común eh, si ustedes tienen cualquier clase de um, de, 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 de cacerola que esté hecha con esto eh, en la parte inferior casi siempre dice verdad stainless steel entonces Igual en los masconcitos hay unos que son para limpiar cocina y dice de hecho si se llaman stainless steel ajá entonces stainless steel sí va, va a ser utilizado para referirse al acero inoxidable conste que la traducción literal de esto no sería la misma sí porque ya, es, es robar ajá <risa> es, no no me refiero al al a lo del stainless más que todo Ah, porque okay. ajá, stainless significaría sin manchas, sí, porque un stain es una mancha, entonces stainless es inmanchable, digamos, entonces inmanchable, como acero inmanchable. Um, pero también, ajá, el steel, eh... oh, cierto, aquí fue que me equivoqué, este steel que mandé yo es el que es de robar, el otro es con doble E, steel. Ah, pues. uh -huh. Sí. <ríe> Ok, so, yeah. Um, y también tenemos el otro estilo. Hay tres estilos, que es el de todavía. Steel. Uy, con doble L. That one. Sí, está el estilo. El primero es de robar. El segundo es del acero. Y el tercero es de aún no todavía. Like, for example, if you say, um, I haven't finished steel. Sí, significa todavía no he terminado. Um, y si también digo, they're not here, uh, they're not here still. Podría ser aún no están aquí. Entonces, um, ¿es más apropiado utilizar yet? Sí, pero también algunas personas utilizan steel. Bueno, ahora sí, quiero escuchar ustedes qué fue lo que recolectaron. Tengo aquí el chart y quiero escuchar a ver cuáles fueron los que tenemos de parte de Opinion. Sí, en el grupo donde estaba... Um, a ver, donde estaba... Walter. ¿Cuáles fueron los adjetivos que ustedes lograron recolectar, Walter, para lo, la categoría de opinión? Eh, I'm sorry, teacher, no, uh, I don't uh, listen to the, okay. the op opinion. How about you, Jenny? What are the adjectives that you have for such category? Smart. Uh -huh. mm. I, I don't know. Okay, smart and I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> uh, smart, maybe um, wonderful, beautiful. Um, uh, what? Great. Colorful, great. Uh -huh. So all of those are um, adjectives of opinion or modifiers of opinion. How about size? What about adjectives of size that you guys recollected? Um, let's see if we hear maybe from um, the group of uh, Leslie. Okay, uh, huge, que es el que ya estaba. <laughs> Large, mm -hmm. medium, and small. All right, nice, very nice. So yeah, large, medium, and small. Uh, those will be like the, oh no, small is también es aquí. Entonces, yeah, large and medium. Nice, very nice. Uh -huh. Great. All right. How about, oh, here, for example, you can mention things like tiny, um, minute. Me parece que es que se dice minute para hablar acerca de cosas que son diminutas. So you can say minute. Um, what else can be included here? Humongous. Es una, no, es enormous uno. could be. Yeah, enormous or humongous. Ese es uno que me gusta bastante. Humongous is basically a mixture between huge and enormous, see, humongous. Hey, you, can you spell that? <laughs> yes, I will send it right now. Humongous. Porque me suena a mondungo. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> sí, mondungo pero ahorita, <laughs> ahorita se los mando, que este es uno bien, bien extraño. Humongous. There we go. So, yeah, it's, it's a mixture, as I said, between uh, huge and enormous. There we have it, humongous. All right, um, how about in the case of, uh, let's see, shape, no, age, age. When it comes to, to talking about age, 
Which are the adjectives that you recollected in your group, Gabriela Garcia? Hi. Hey there. Um, you said age, right? Age, yes. Asian? Mm -hmm. We just said Asian, but I got Asian and new. Oh, right. Okay. So young, uh, ancient, new, and old. Those will be the ones to complete the chart. Great. Very good. Um, how about the ones for shape? Luis, which ones would you mention when it comes to talking about shape? Circular, mm -hmm. <coughs> rectangular, mm -hmm. eh, lineal. Lineal, okay, nice. Yeah, that sounds nice. Now, when it comes to circular, you can use it, but circular is more, um, more regularly used with things that um, are like full circles, see? ¿sí? Con, a veces, o sea, me refiero que a veces hay cosas que son redondas, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, solo en un, en un extremo y el resto tal vez sea más rectangular. Entonces, y nosotros igual um, en español a veces decimos, ah, sí, es, es redondo. Pero lo utilizamos para hablar de como en general, ¿verdad? De cosas que tienen esa, esa forma. Pero circular sí va a ser específico solo para cosas que de verdad sean, no tengan el, el, el círculo completo. Para el resto tenemos round, ¿sí? Um, so yeah, lineal and um, rectangular are also great options. Nice. How about um, color? What about color? What are the adjectives or modifiers of color that you got in your group, um, Elizabeth? Okay, uh, color, uh, blue, yellow. <laughs> okay. Agree. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to color, it's easy, right? You can mention basically any color and you're done. Uh, because, yeah, you can mention magenta, you can mention fuchsia, um, you can mention, I don't know, um, pink. Golden, yeah, pink, golden, silver, um, any color. So any color that exists and you will be okay. So, yeah, even platin platinum can be used as a color. So... You have, you know, a huge variety of adjectives when it comes to mentioning a color. Um, now, oh, yeah. In another uh, thing is that, for example, something that many people don't know is como de referirnos cuando algo es pálido. ¿Ustedes saben cómo se dice cuando algo es pálido en inglés? Like pale. Okay, great. Yes, pale. That is the one, pale. Bueno, creo que aquí hay uno de los que no son muchos, ¿verdad? So, great, pale. Yes, that's how you're going to say it. Cuando alguien uh, o algo es pálido, se va a, uh, o podemos referirnos a ello como uh, pale. How about origin? Which, one are, which ones are some of the adjectives of origin that you have recollected in your group, Abby? Okay, seems like Abby might not be around. How about you, Melanie? Adjectives of um, origin. Which ones would you mention when it comes to the origin of things? Italian, mm -hmm. American, and Thai. Great. Italian, American, and Thai. Great. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, what or when can we use this? If we talk about uh, food, if we talk about cuisine, if we talk about um clothing if you talk about cultures you can use um adjectives or modifiers of origin i can say for example i would love to try an italian pizza i would love to um dress a thai hat for example i would love to visit an american city so you can mention um you know the origin for those sentences or for those examples in many occasions so yeah yeah uh, now, how about material? For material, well, I gave you guys some examples, so I feel like it's also relatively easy. Uh, which ones are some of the material that you recollected in your group? Um, Rosa? Hi, teacher. Hey there. Hi. 
Yes. Well, uh, if you uh, want me to help, I can mention, for example, plastic. You can, um, of course, use that one. It is one of the most toxic, but still, you know, you can use that one. Um, you can paper. refer to mm -hmm, paper once again. Yeah. Ceramic. Paper. Which one? Sorry. Ceramic. Ceramic. Great. Yeah. That is a very good example. Um, maybe a stone. A stone can be used, you know, to, 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 to refer to a material. Aluminium, you can use um, metal, iron, um, as I said before, golden, sorry, gold. But when you use it, it will be golden, golden something. Is um, current say pirate who I can explain the tela? El que? El de tela. Fabric or tela? Uh, yes, you, you say fabric. You can say fabric. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fabric or um, cloth. Some people say cloth, but it's not like a common way of to refer to it. You know, it would be like cloth in like if it was in the past. Sería la forma de decirlo, cloth, pero no es tan común. Es más fácil utilizar el fabric o más común el utilizar el fabric. Also, you can mention cotton, you can mention polyester, um, and the different components that, you know, exist nowadays, the spandex even. So there are many, many options nowadays when it comes to, um, to mentioning materials of like basically what things are made out of. Now, the last one, purpose. Ese se lo dejé a usted, Lorena. ¿Cuáles serían algunos ejemplos de purpose? Eh... What you said, a swimming suit, swimming foot, mm -hmm. um, running shoes, mm -hmm. um, another one was uh, cycling shoes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can mention things like cooking pod. See, cooking pod is como un, uh, una, un jarroncito pequeño para cocinar. Sí, entonces sería un cooking pod. Uh, or baking painting oven. box. Uh huh. Baking box. Um, for example, boxing gloves. See, ¿sí? los los eh, guantes para boxear. Boxing gloves. Um, some people say even drinking water. See, ¿sí? drinking water. Que es el agua para pues que está disponible para ser consumida, verdad? Entonces, drinking water. Um, because of course we know that there are many forms of water, like there are dirt wa dirty waters. So yeah, drinking water is like a special thing that has a purpose for it. Um, so ironing yeah. clothes. Ironing clothes or cutting board, for example. Cutting board, si es una tabla para cortar, so cutting board. Um, a dining table, una mesa para cenar, dining table. Or um, Many, many other things, you know, that are simply verbs that are in its in their participle form, but they are being used as the purpose of something. So, yes. yeah, that is basically the modifiers or adjectives of purpose. But, well, I feel like the topic is or has already been covered in a, in a broad way. Creo que ahora sí, ¿verdad? Ya como que entendemos eh, de mejor manera cuáles son cada uno de ellos, cada uno de los, de los adjetivos o de los modifiers que vamos a usar. Um, ya la próxima semana vamos a estar también dialogando acerca de cuáles pueden ser un par de temas. A mí al final, más que todo en este curso, en este en módulo que es así bien cortito, eh, me gusta tomar su opinión para una o dos clases al final que, en las cuales podemos estudiar algo que ustedes deseen. O sea, repasar un tema o algo que sea de su interés. Entonces, eh, el día lunes podríamos ¿verdad? dialogar acerca de eso y ver cuáles pueden ser algunos temas que a ustedes les gustaría ya sea retocar o aprender si es algo um, diferente, que tal vez no necesariamente esté eh, incluido ¿verdad? en la información de la plataforma, pero que pues les genere interés a ustedes. So, um, basically that will be it for this week. Uh, all I have to do left right now is uh, just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope all your plans become true. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the night and see you, see you next Monday. So bye-bye for now. Enjoy your bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.